Hey everyone, it's Mark. You saw the title and thumbnail for this video. I don't really need to explain what's going on here. We're talking about Ash's Johto gym battles. Personally, I think these are a major upgrade from the gym battles that Ash had back in Kanto, so I'm excited to rank each of these gym matches. Speaking of Kanto, this video only came about because you all reached the goal I set for the video ranking Ash's Kanto gym battles. I said if that got 200 likes, I would make a video ranking Ash's Johto gym battles. Well, here we are, and now let's raise the bar. If this video gets 250, likes, then I'll make a video ranking all of Ash's Hoenn gym battles. I know we can reach that goal, so make sure you hit the like button right now. Alright, that's enough of me rambling on at the start here. Let's rank all of Ash Ketchum's Johto gym battles from worst to best. Number 8, Ash vs. Whitney. So even though Ash did battle Whitney twice, I'm just going to count both of them together as one entry for the sake of this list. Their first battle took place at the Goldenrod Gym, and it was a 3 on 3 that started with Cyndaquil vs Nidorina. Nidorina got one shot by Flamethrower, and things were looking good for Ash and his team. Whitney's next Pokemon was her Clefairy, whose metronome attack only resulted in a mighty splash attack. Yeah, not a great look when a gym leader forfeits, so one of their Pokemon doesn't get hurt. Whitney may have been down 3 Pokemon to 1, but anyone who played the Johto games as a kid growing up knows what came next. Excellent point, Ash, and Miltake immediately initiated its usual rollout sweep, first KOing Cyndaquil, then Totodile, and even Pikachu's Thunderbolt couldn't damage Miltank while it was rolling out. Don't feel too bad, Ash, we've all been swept by Whitney's Miltank before. So what happened next? Did this crushing defeat cause Ash to begin a training arc that saw him and his Pokemon grow closer and reaffirm their goal to be the very best? Well, no, not at all. Instead, they just went to Whitney's family farm in the next episode, the usual hijinks ensued, and eventually Ash ended up foiling another one of Team Rocket's evil schemes by strategically creating ditches in the ground. After this, he immediately challenged Whitney to another battle, claiming that if he could defeat Miltank, he wanted a rematch back at the gym. With this strategy ready, Ash sent out the same three Pokemon as the initial gym battle. And had Cyndaquil just get absolutely demolished, Totodile creates some ditches in the ground with Water Gun, only for Pikachu to use those ditches to get underneath Miltank, using this leverage to send Miltank flying, and land a Thunderbolt now that it was exposed and vulnerable. Okay, cool. Ash defeated Miltank in a three-on-one situation. Wait, hold on. Why is Whitney giving him a gym battle? This was not even an official gym battle, yet Ash is celebrating with a badge? Oh man, this mess felt way too much like Ash's Kanto gym battles, where he didn't even earn half of his gym badges legitimately. Thankfully, the other Johto gym battles were all way better than this. Number 7, Ash vs. Chuck Alright, so while I think Ash vs. Chuck is the second worst of Ash's Johto gym battles, I still think it was a great battle and a fantastic episode, so I'm not gonna just sit here and make fun of it like I did with Ash vs. Whitney. After meeting Chuck on the beach and seeing that he was a little off his rocker, even practicing his Machoke submission attack with his Pokemon, you knew Chuck was gonna put a lot of heart into his match against Ash. Chuck's entire strategy revolved around believing in his Pokemon's ability, strength, and focus. He certainly loved to say, focus your energy all the time during this battle. As for Ash, he tried to win with strategy at the beginning, but Pikachu couldn't put up much of a fight against Poliwrath, only landing minor damage before getting knocked out. This was when things got really good though, there was real tension as Ash had to figure out what to do. He was unsure of who his second Pokemon should be, and he ultimately decided to put all of his faith in Bayleaf. He needed Bayleaf to defeat both of Chuck's Pokemon. Bayleaf is one of my favorite Pokemon that Ash has ever had, I won't deny that, and this match was arguably its best battle moment. It struggled to defeat Poliwrath, but it ultimately leveled the score at 1-1. One. The job wasn't finished yet though, and we know just how much training Chuck and Machoke have put in, these two clowns were sparring and crying together just earlier today. However, the two with the closer bond was Ash and Bailey, and that's what won them this battle. At one point, Ash even rejected Brock and Misty's advice to think more strategically, as Ash knew he had to trust Bailey to tough this one out, and that's exactly what happened. The climax of the battle was an epic tug of war between Machoke and Bailey's Vine Whip, one that Machoke ultimately won, and they launched straight into a submission attack. This sent Bailey flying into the air, and Ash used this momentum in his favor by having Bailey fuse Vine Whip again, turning the tables on Machoke in what was a pretty inventive finish to the battle. Ash no doubt deserved this gym badge. It was a great example of how the bonds he shares with his Pokemon can lead him to great heights. Number 6, Ash vs. Bugsy. 
Ash's second gym battle in the Johto region was a good mix of storytelling and strategy. While a 3 on 3 battle against a bug type gym leader doesn't sound that exciting to me on paper, this battle actually ended up being a lot better than I expected. This match centered around Ash's Cyndaquil and its ability to use fire attacks. For those who don't remember, Cyndaquil wasn't able to use its fire when Ash first caught it. It had to be warmed up in battle before it could light its fire. Anyways, Bugsy did a good job preventing Cyndaquil from getting going, using some tricky tactics to frustrate Ash. Although Pokemon like Spinarak and Metapod are pretty weak, this battle did a good job showing off some of their other skills, like using the environment to their advantage. Much like in the games, though, Bugsy's main threat is his Scyther, and Ash wasn't going to have an easy time defeating it. It was strong, quick, and evasive, and when the battle came down to Scyther versus Cyndaquil, even Bugsy was thinking that this match was over. Cyndaquil didn't stand a chance. Well, of course, he was wrong, and Cyndaquil's flame came to life, and now things were getting interesting. Bugsy's last line of defense was using Sword Stance to deflect any fire attacks, but Ash thought up a way around this too. And in a move that feels almost like it's straight out of the Diamond and Pearl series, Ash had Cyndaquil jump over Scyther and spin, giving it the perfect angle to burn Scyther to a crisp and give Ash the victory in a very hard-fought tactical battle. Number 5, Ash vs. Morty this gym battle really started back at the Pokemon Center where Ash was coming up with his strategy. He knew Morty's Gengar was a powerhouse and he wasn't used to battling ghost type Pokemon in general. Nurse Joy of all people gave Ash some pretty important advice pointing out that Noctowl's foresight was going to be the key to victory. Sure enough, this 3v3 gym battle was going to center around Ash's Noctowl and this probably ended up being its greatest ever performance. Of course, Ash deciding to lead with Noctowl was an interesting choice as even though foresight was successful, Morty still had some tricks up his sleeve. Ash really struggled in this battle. I mean, it did not take very long for the situation to end up like this. Ash had already sent out all three of his Pokemon, and he still hadn't even defeated Morty's first. Ultimately, Cyndaquil did get the job done there. Man, Cyndaquil may be the MVP of this list with all these impressive performances, and we haven't even gotten to some of its best battles yet. Anyways, back to this gym battle, and to Morty's credit, he used all kinds of interesting tactics to keep the battle in his favor. From using moves like Mean Look or Hypnosis, he never gave up the edge in this one. And things really started to heat up when Haunter's Confuse Ray clashed with Noctowl's Hypnosis. I will say that in order to enjoy this battle, you do have to really suspend your disbelief and not think about game logic too much. That went pretty much out the window in this one. In the midst of all the chaos, Noctowl would end up learning Confusion, and now Ash actually had a chance of winning. Thanks in large part to Noctowl, Ash may have dragged it back to one Pokemon apiece, but Morty's Gengar was still the final boss, and it moved so quickly that Noctowl couldn't even hit it with Foresight. Instead, Ash had to use Confusion to send a Psychic Burst across the battlefield, which allowed it to use Foresight, and ultimately, my least favorite part of this battle was the ending. Noctowl KO'd Gengar with just one tackle. A bit anticlimactic, but nonetheless, a fantastic performance by Ash's Noctowl, and a great come from behind victory for Ash against a very tough opponent. Number 4, Ash vs. Price. I surprised myself with how high I ended up ranking this battle. I feel like I always used to remember this gym battle for the way that it ended, but saying that this battle wasn't very good because it ended with Price forfeiting the match, well, that's just not how I see it. First of all, we've got ice physics, and I always love it when the environment really factors into the match. Price tries to take full advantage of this battlefield by using Dugong, who can slide on the ice and swim in the pool in the middle of the battlefield. You'd think Cyndaquil would be a bad matchup for Ash, and well, that's exactly what he wants you to think. The moment where Price has Dugong die underwater, and Ash tells Cyndaquil to follow it. I mean, what an idiot, right? Cyndaquil is a sitting duck, but how come Ash is so confident? Oh, that's why. He lured Dugong in so that Cyndaquil could blast it with a close-range swift, and anytime we get to see the epic visual of Cyndaquil surfing on the waves and launching a flamethrower, oh man, this battle is awesome and it's not even halfway over. This battle was a 2v2, so Price's hopes came down to pile of swine. As a reminder, the previous episode was all about Ash helping Price find and save his long-lost pile of swine. These two were best friends that decades ago, but Ash saved Piloswine's life, and now Piloswine was all that stood between Ash and his seventh gym badge. Price's old friend was no slouch, knocking out Cyndaquil almost immediately, and for some reason Ash chose Pikachu as his last Pokemon. Quite frankly, I think this final showdown was epic, but that's because I have absolutely no problem with this battle completely disregarding game logic, and having Pikachu's electric attacks work like normal against Piloswine. If you can't take it seriously because Piloswine shouldn't be getting affected by Thunderbolts or Thunder, well, then I can understand why this battle may not be for you. In my opinion though, this was awesome. Both Pikachu and Piloswine were giving it everything they had. Ash using the ice physics to his advantage was a real highlight, and you could tell that Price believed in his partner even if he did worry about his old friend facing this tough of a battle. Right when it looked like Pikachu was going to land the finishing blow, that's when Price threw in the towel, and that's ultimately why I don't think the forfeit took away from this battle at all. Ash was about to win anyways, 
and Price wanting to protect his friend made sense given the context of the story. So altogether, I thought this was a fantastic battle despite it having several red flags on paper. Number 3, Ash vs. Faulkner this may be the most surprising ranking on this list, it certainly seems surprising to me that Ash's first gym battle in a region could end up being one of the best, but for Johto, that's definitely the case. Ash vs. Faulkner is way better than it had any right being. I was a big fan of Faulkner's character. He was clearly a nice guy, but when it came to battling with his flying types, he got super serious, even taunting Ash for being stupid enough to pick a grass-type Pokemon to begin the battle with. While Chikorita didn't do much in this match, this just cleared the way for Pikachu to shine. In case you hadn't put this together yet, Ash used Pikachu in every Johto gym battle, and arguably his best performance came against Faulkner. Not only did Pikachu deal with Hoot Hoot, but it also defeated Dodrio, which I thought was hilarious because Faulkner just casually threw in the plot twist that he had never lost with his Dodrio before. Sheesh, what a powerhouse. Oh wait, Pikachu took it down. Good job, buddy. As with every other battle on this list, we knew that it was going to come down to the gym leader's ace to decide things, and unlike in the games where Faulkner is just some weakling, in the anime he owns a fearsome Pidgeot, one that's bigger, stronger, and faster than Ash as ever was. How could Ash possibly defeat it? Oh, I'll tell you how, by using Charizard. Yeah, once again, kind of crazy to think that this was Ash's first Johto gym battle, yet here we are talking about an epic showdown between Charizard and Pidgeot to end off a 3v3 battle. You'd have thought Ash vs. Faulkner would have been something like Chikorita taking on a Pidgeotto, but no, this was way better. Ultimately, Ash and Charizard are just too strong of a team, they use their wits to trap Pidgeot in a fire spin, and once Charizard latches onto Pidgeot, you know what's coming next. It's time for Pidgeot to go for a ride, and it's time for Ash to start celebrating because he just earned his first Johto gym badge in stellar fashion. Number 2, Ash vs. Jasmine now this, this is a special battle for me. I think Ash vs. Jasmine is one of the more underrated battles of all time. The face-off between Cyndaquil and Celix is just so good. Plenty of times throughout the history of the anime, there have been incredible 1v1 showdowns where there's tons of story involved, whether it's a rivalry between the two Pokemon, a rivalry between the two trainers, or just Ash's Pokemon going through its own character development. Cyndaquil vs. Steelix had none of those elements, but that's what makes it unique. This wasn't about some overarching storyline, this battle was purely to decide if Ash and Cyndaquil were good enough to defeat Jasmine Steelix. That's it. It's real simple, and I think that makes this battle even better in my opinion. Of course, this battle was 2v2. The start of the match featured the requisite Pikachu appearance, nothing too flashy, but it was cool how Ash told Pikachu to intentionally take a hit from Magnemite, thus allowing Pikachu the opportunity to hit it back. A small bit of strategy, but it worked. On to the main course then, Jasmine Steelix, and this thing was a beast. This may have been its debut episode, but the show did a great job showing us just how strong it was in no time at all, so we knew Ash had a tough task on his hands. By the time Ash sends out Cyndaquil as his final Pokemon, there's still half the episode to go. We got lots of time dedicated to this match. Both trainers used great strategy, with Jasmine using Sandstorm in a unique way to deflect any fire attacks, followed up by using the Sandstorm as cover to dig underground. Ash did a great job dodging though, Cyndaquil was not going to be able to take many hits from this powerhouse, and tactics like using Flamethrower against the wall to redirect Cyndaquil out of harm's way are simple but effective. Same goes for Cyndaquil using Smokescreen at opportune times, or using the whole Steelix dug to get behind Steelix. Ash had to be crafty if he had any chance of winning this David vs Goliath matchup, and he and Cyndaquil were working extremely well together. Even after taking heavy damage, Cyndaquil wasn't finished just yet. This little fire type won't give up no matter what. It will prove that it's strong enough to win. And knowing he has to go for broke, Ash just calls for the strongest flame thrower that Cyndaquil could muster. It doesn't do anything at first, but wait, is that Sandstorm turning red? This battle took place before abilities existed. This wasn't Blaze or any other special power giving Cyndaquil more strength. This was Ash believing in his Pokemon and Cyndaquil's guts and willpower allowing it to surpass itself, burning Steelix to a crisp, and somehow earning an improbable victory. Man, I love this battle so much. I think that much is obvious. It was also pretty obvious what the number one battle was going to be in this list, so let's get to it. Number 1, Ash vs. Claire When it came to Ash's Johto Gym Challenge, they saved the best for last. As much as I have glowing reviews about many of the other gym battles Ash had in this region, I think Ash vs. Claire is the undisputed number 1. I feel like everyone always wants Ash to bring back his old Pokemon to help him win tough battles, and by recalling Snorlax and Charizard to his team for this match, Ash assembled the closest thing we have ever seen to his all-star lineup. I mean, I think it's fair to say that at this time, his three strongest Pokemon were Snorlax, Pikachu, and Charizard, and he needed all of them at their very best to defeat Claire. It is worth 
mentioning that Ash initially challenged Claire a few episodes earlier, but this gym battle got interrupted so fast that I'm not really even going to acknowledge it as far as this ranking is concerned. Instead, I'm just going to focus on how awesome it was seeing the heavyweight clash between Ash's Pokemon and Claire's. The battlefield having a pool in the middle did add an extra layer of strategy with both trainers used to their advantage at various points in the match. Of course, it ended up coming down to Charizard vs Dragonair, and this was even better than the Charizard vs Pidgeot showdown that I talked about earlier. Ash really had to pull out all the stops to defeat Claire. She was presented as such a strong opponent, which made it all the more satisfying seeing Ash execute moves like flaming seismic toss in order to win. I mean, that might be the greatest seismic toss that Charizard has ever done. You be the judge yourself though. Was this the best gym battle from Ash's Johto journey? Go ahead and tell me down in the comments how you would rank these battles from 8 up to number 1. And if you made it this far into the video, go ahead and hit like. Remember that I set the goal at 250 likes for me to rank Ash's Hoenn gym battles. And be sure to subscribe so you don't miss that video or any other videos I make next. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.